In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, hearty welcome to this our program, Daily Walk with Mary. Today we have a very special title given to Our Lady, Our Lady of Dordrecht, Holland, a shrine built by Saint Santera. Our Lady of Dordrecht in Holland is located at the west end of the Oost State and is also known as Grote Kirk, Church of Our Lady. The name of Dordrecht comes from the informal name of Dort, given to the town by its inhabitants, combined with Recht, which means Ford. It became a major market city due to its strategic situation. So the, the name of the place, Dort, Dordrecht. See, it is, is said the name of Dordrecht comes from the informal name of Dort given to the town by the inhabitants. So they were calling it with the name Dort. D O R D T, Dort. And then it was combined with the word Drecht, which means Ford. A shallow river, shallow, so that we can walk, cross the river walking. So that is the ford. It became a major market city due to its strategic location. Now, according to tradition, it was built by Saint Sauters, Sa Sa also known as Saint Sura or Saint Santera, in about the year 1300, on the spot designated by an angel, as it is said, who was sent by the Blessed Virgin. So this is how the church is related in a very special way with Our Lady. Where the church is to be built, that was designated by an angel who was sent by Our Lady from heaven. So it was Our Lady's own decision to have this church built in that particular spot. And it was built by Saint Santera or also named Sura or Sautis and so on. Saint Sautis is said to have planned on building the church when she only had three small coins in her purse. And when she didn't have utterly anything in her pocket, in her purse, in her uh, bank account, she was absolutely, so to say, devoid of money and wealth. Only a three small coins was in her purse. Much as Saint Ron Bosco later did in the 19th century. Saint Ron Bosco also is specially known, renowned for this, willing to build even big schemes buildings with no money at all in the hands. That is so fully trusting in the providence of God. When something is done for the glory of God, not for one's own interest, we can so fully confide in God because it is God's work and God will see to it that it is completed in the right time. The saints afterwards received the crown of martyrdom in the same church where the shrine was 
erected. It was through her efforts, her design, her directions, the church was built, and then in that church itself, she was martyred. She was killed. You know how she was killed. She was murdered by the builders of the chapel out of greed because of her supposed wealth. So they see money is flowing from her hands and the church building is going on without any obstruction for lack of money. So they thought she is in possession of a great amount of wealth and to take that money from her they even planned to kill her while she was in the search itself so thus she was murdered and thus she became a martyr in the very same church where she lived in real poverty and at the same time built that church in all its splendor there is a legend that saints Sura rose from the dead after the murder. There is no much proof of it, but there is a rumor, there is a say, there is a legend that she was, she rose from the dead. There is a painting of Saint Sura in the church of Saint Nicholas, building a church in her hands, holding a church in her hands. As she looks up, at the statue of Blessed Mary holding the infant Jesus on her right arm. So this is the picture of the Saint Sura. The picture goes like this. She is in the church looking at Our Lady in heaven. And as she was looking at Our Lady, she was holding in her hands a, the, a church. Suras, there is a painting of the Saint Sura in the church of Saint Nicholas, holding a church in her hands. She is having a church in her hands, and she looks up at the statue of, our, of the Blessed Mother holding the infant Jesus on her right arm. So on her right arm, Our Lady is holding the infant Jesus. And this saint standing on the earth is holding the church in her hands. What's symbolic? Our Lady is holding Jesus in her arms, in her right arm, on her right arm the child Jesus, the physical body of Jesus being carried by Mary. And down this saint is carrying a church, symbol of the Catholic Church, the mystical body of Christ. So Mary is holding the physical body of Christ. This saint is carrying the mystical body of Christ. So there is much meaning in that, in that picture. The Grot Kirk in Dordrecht is a fantastic find for anyone who is interested in religious buildings or medieval architecture. So that is just has drawn the attention of so many people coming there because to see that structure itself was a satisfaction because there we see a beautiful religious building and at the same time a medieval architecture. Alternatively, known as Dordrecht Minster, the great church of or the Church of Our Lady. This establishment is <coughs> the largest church in the city. So you see, it was built by a woman who became a saint, a martyr, with having no money, no funds in her hands. 
ready to be used but that building has become one of the great admire and draws the admiration of all those who visit that place <coughs> this establishment is the largest church in the city this church was ranked among the top 100 dutch heritages sites on a list which was created by the department of conservation in the early 1990s so you see the dutch government has taken it one of its monuments to be protected it is noted for its brabant gothic style and is unfinished and Un- unfinished church tower still draws the attraction of so many so the church built by the saint sura when she was not not rich she didn't have so much wealth and she didn't know how to complete the building still trusting in god she started and became one of the wonderful churches in holland to render her memory more celebrated god caused a fountain to flow after her death which through the intercession of this saint and recourse to mary cured fevers so there was a fountain that began to flow after the death of this saint and it had a miraculous power healing power so in and recourse to mary cure fevers the healing water soothes troubled minds so it is not only physical healing also gives psychological uh, mental healing too brings relief to chains aching brows and strength to weakened limbs as mary has sick children come to her for aid so all those who are sick all those who feel the need of the special help from our lady they flock to her in this church and they receive this blessing through the intercession of the saint through the power of the blessed virgin mary Dordrecht is the oldest city in Holland having been granted city rights by the count of Holland William I in the year 1220 so it was in the year 1220 that it was given the uh, the status of a town of a city the church was built in the gothic style and is the only one in Holland with stone vaulting the tower at 102 22.3 meters tall is still the tallest structure in the city again another great special thing to be noted is that it it has the tallest tower in the city a total of 49 bells were installed in the year 1949 charles the bold the last valois duke of burgundy is buried in the choir space behind the high altar so these are some of the historic events that took place in connection with that church in 1568 the dutch revolted against spain and king philip ii and nearly all of holland met a Dor- met at Dordrecht for what was called the first assembly of the free states the church was already the home of michelangelo's sculpture known as the madonna and the child so two of the historical importance it is said one the first assembly of the free states was held in that church another a statue of a statue made by sculpted by michelangelo 
his house in this church the madonna with the child which had been donated to the church in the year 1514 thankfully it somehow survived the ravages of the french revolution you have seen in all these uh, narrations how the french revolution has demolished many of the churches and many of the holy monuments and this was done also to this church but this statue was not attacked by them or somehow escaped their attack it somehow survived this ravages of the french revolution and was returned to the church after being stolen by nazis in second world war during the second world war the nazi soldiers stole this statue took it away because nobody could ask them they are the soldiers going about spreading threat and almost a death everywhere so they carried this statue but somehow our lady herself induced him or so to say pushed him to give this statue back was returned to the church after being stolen by nazis in world war 2 so these are some of the historical events as well as the spiritual uh, events that took place especially with regard to the life of saint the saint sura or saint santera herself became a martyr and especially noted for her trust in god endeavoring venturing to do such great thing or building such a beautiful church without any fund in her hands her only wealth was her complete trust in our lord in in the providence of god and the trust in the help timely help of our lady let us pray that we too may have this confidence and trust in the providence of god and entrust ourselves to god through the hands of mary that we will enjoy peace and happiness and success in our life may our blessed mother in the seat for us all so that we may receive the rich blessings from god the father the son and the holy spirit that you remain with us forever amen